Hello, everyone. My name is Kale, also known as Dino Swan Roblox, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to our Level Up workshop on quests, achievements, and dailies, featuring Roblox's own Game Insights game designer, Aaron Jennings. Aaron, over to you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Level Up workshop on quests, achievements, and dailies. Before we dive in, here's a quick overview of the topics we'll cover today. Since many of you are likely familiar with quests and even have them in your game already, I'll get through the introduction as quickly as I can. At their simplest, quests are just tasks that players complete in order to earn a reward. They can be short, comprising a single task, or long with multiple tasks that players must complete for the reward. Quests can stand alone or exist as a long series that drive a player's progression throughout the entire game. And they can even be used to deliver narrative. They're a very versatile tool that you can shape to fit your game's needs. Meanwhile, achievements, also known as badges on Roblox, are goals that take a really long time to complete and rely on quest-like mechanics. They pretty much exclusively exist as single tasks, like this example from Jailbreak. Although they can have multiple levels to a task that increase in difficulty. In this case, there could be multiple levels to this achievement with each one requiring a higher bounty value. Although achievements are generally completed passively, just in the course of playing the game normally, they can also be used to encourage players to engage with systems or play in ways that they might not have otherwise tried. And finally, we have dailies. These are quests that refresh, you guessed it, on a daily basis. They provide players with a checklist of tasks for the day's play sessions. Some games present the same quests every day. Others mix things up by changing them out daily or even theme them around the latest content release, event, or expansion. Now with great quests comes great responsibility because when you assign a quest to players, you're essentially telling them this is a priority. Even if it's optional, dangling that reward in front of them could be such a powerful motivator that some players will focus on those tasks to the exclusion of all other gameplay. So it's important to understand the role that quests play in your game, how to make them the right amount of engaging and challenging, and how to write them so that your players understand exactly what you're asking them to do. And that's why we're here today. Quests can serve a variety of functions in your game. Here are a few that we'll be taking a closer look at. Retention refers to the percentage of players who return to a game day over day. There are a few metrics used to track retention, including day one or D1, the number of players who play the game the first time one day and return to play again the next. Similarly, D7 and D30 track how many players return one week and one month after their first day of play. Long-term retention, D30 and beyond, indicates whether a game has a healthy amount of interesting systems, deep progression, and compelling content to keep players engaged. Quests are one system that you can use to provide players with ongoing goals and rewards to keep them engaged and retaining. Players who are highly engaged who are invested and actively participating in the various systems in the game are more likely to retain. And that's important because the players who stick around are the ones who will introduce their friends to the game, will make the game world feel alive and populated and provide competition for other players. And they might even spend money in the game at some point. You can track their engagement through metrics like session length and number of sessions in a day, Clearly, if a player is having fun, they're going to try to spend more time in the game. But engagement can also be tracked on a system by system basis. For example, this heat map was used by the jailbreak team to gauge the density of players at various locations on their map. 
As you can see, they're primarily concentrated in areas with popular gameplay. Quest completion rates can also be indicative of engagement with the systems that are tied to the quest tasks. If employers enjoy doing robberies and understand how to do them, they're more likely to complete robbery-related quests. So quests can indicate whether there are issues with confusion or even just boring gameplay affecting retention. An important part of engagement is progression, where a player experiences improvement over time through practice and investment. Quests can act as a progression system by providing mid and long-term goals for players to strive toward, opportunities to practice skills, and rewards like XP, currency, and skill points to upgrade their character. So in that way, each quest provides incremental progress in the player's larger journey. By the time that players finish the quest, they should be ready to face the next challenge. In NMOs, this is where the player has completed all of the quests in the zone on map, and then moves on to the next zone for more quests and more challenging gameplay. Of course, players can't be engaged in every system in your game if they don't know that they exist. Quests can help surface the different features of your game, making players aware of them and encouraging them to try out new things in exchange for a reward. This master criminal badge from Jailbreak surfaces five different robbery locations. Newer players might not know that all of these options exist in the game and discover them while browsing the available achievements. But it's not just about new players. It can also be useful for returning players to be reminded of everything that they can do in the game if it's been a while since they played. Or if you introduce new systems into your game and add quests to help surface them. Quests can also introduce variety into players' sessions by providing them with an assortment of tasks and goals to accomplish, drawing from different systems in the game, like these daily quests from the Wild West, which hit all of the game's major systems. If they're adequately rewarded, players will deviate from their habitual gameplay and try something new. And that's important because it means that all of your game systems are getting engagement. And players who might otherwise get bored doing the same thing every session are encouraged to mix things up and do something a little different. When it comes to onboarding, players retain instructions better when they have performed the action, not just read about it. And quests are an excellent tool for getting players to do things because they provide context along with the instruction and then reinforce the accomplishment with a reward. They're also a great tool for you to see how well your players understand what they need to do. If you have analytics set up, you can track progress through the quest line and identify points where players drop off. Those might indicate a bug, or they could be a sign that players are confused and your tutorial needs more work. The rewards from quests aren't just a motivator for completing a task. They can also serve as a regular source of currency that players can rely on and that you can predict, since you should have a good idea of how long it will take players to complete a task and earn the reward. Daily quests often serve this function because they're short tasks that can provide modest rewards every day. And those add up over time, which is especially nice for free players receiving hard currency so they can eventually buy that shiny item that they've had their eye on. Quests can also be used to deliver narrative to players. In this example from Royale High, a lifeguard is complaining about litter on the beach. He goes on to ask the player to do some cleanup so he can enjoy surfing the waves again. Just in that short setup, a few things have magically happened. The dull and unattractive task of picking up trash is suddenly given new context. I'm not just collecting garbage, I'm making the beach a better place. And it's personal. Here's someone whose life is impacted by the problem and I can help them. That feels really good. And it's something of a reward in and of itself, though not a substitute for actual rewards. I also feel like my choices are having an impact on the world. 
not only do I advance the story and get to hear about all of the righteous waves the surfer will enjoy, but the world is physically different because of my actions. And that makes me feel both immersed in the world and an important part of it. Now I'm more invested than I would have been if I had simply been presented a checklist of tasks that included picking up trash on the beach. And this is probably the right amount of narrative for the general Roblox audience. A few sentences of setup, followed by a few more sentences to wrap up the story once the quest is complete. It doesn't take much time in a player's session. And because it's a standalone story, players don't have to remember a bunch of details from other quests that they've already completed. So you can get the benefit of having narrative in your game without having to develop long storylines or make story the focus of your game if that's something you're not interested in. When you introduce new content into your game, you have some choices. You can make it all available for free. You can put it in the store so that players can buy it or you can make them earn it. There are valid reasons for doing any of those or a combination of them, but making players work for the content makes that content last longer. So you won't have to put out another release quite as quickly to keep your players satisfied. If you have a quest system, it is the perfect way to get your players to put in some effort in order to earn those rewards. But if there's a timer on it, that introduces time pressure that increases engagement even more. This kind of quest is especially fun around seasonal holidays, which have a built-in expiration date on the calendar with items that are themed around the event. With the expiration of the quest line, the ability to earn those items goes away too. And that conveys prestige on the items and on the players who earn them. But that doesn't necessarily mean that players who miss the content are out of luck forever. You can bring those items back once enough time has passed, maybe as items in the event shop or a loot crate next year. Just make sure if you do that, that you also introduce some new quest reward items for those players who earned the old rewards already. Now, one thing to note is that only the ability to earn the items disappears when the event is over. Players who have earned the reward content should continue to have access to it. You should never take away items that the player has earned just because they're maybe not seasonally appropriate anymore. Never put items into your game that you're not comfortable with players owning permanently. Lastly, I want to quickly touch on the special Roblox events that many games participate in. When you have a huge influx of new players coming into your game just for the event, quests are a good way to very quickly give them the information that they need in order to get that event content that they're after, and of course, deliver that content as a reward. This example from the Creatures of Scenaria 21 Pilots quest tells players what they need to do. They're hunting for runes hidden throughout the world and how to do it. They need to use the sniff ability that's activated with the H key. It also tracks their progress and shows them the reward that they'll earn. All of the information that new players need is in one place, making it more likely that they will be successful and enjoy the event and maybe even return to the game even after the event is over. So that was an overview of some of the utility that quests can bring to your game. But what type of quest is best suited for each application? This reference chart breaks down each of the topics that we just flew through and indicates which are the most appropriate quest types to fulfill those specific needs in your game. As always, you will be able to download this deck from the presentation on the dev forum once the video is live on YouTube, including this handy chart. And with that, we are ready for our first Q&A. Uh, first question, can you have too many quests? Is it better to always have quests for players to complete or to occasionally give them space to do what they want? Absolutely, excellent question. That's something that we'll be talking a lot about later, but this is kind of a preview. Um, yes, there is such a thing as too many quests. Players can get overwhelmed and burned out trying to keep up. So pacing is super important. Uh, second anonymous question. 
Um, when I guess when it comes to engagement, is it typical to review longer term engagement, such as over six months, a year, et cetera? Um, I guess that's compared to like shorter term engagement, like seven days, one day, 30 days. So the standards really are the D1, D7, D30, and you could look past that. And it's not a bad idea if you have a game that's been around for a while, if you're hoping that your players will stick around for a while. Obviously, you want your players to uh, to retain as long as possible. But um, it's also very common for players to drop off over time. Um, there's just not much that you can do about that, especially on Roblox. There's so much competition and very little friction for changing games and finding new ones. So, you know, anything past your, your D30, maybe six months, you know, you're, you're going to see a pretty steep decline, um, no matter how well you retain your prison. That's why it's really important to pay close attention to your shorter term retention, your, your D1, your D7, because those are new players coming into your game and you want to make sure that they stick around so that um, you know you have that that larger player base. Your funnel is as wide as possible going into those longer terms where you're going to see more drop off. Can you talk generally about the ethics um, about concepts like time limited rewards? I guess rewards that are only available for a short period of time. Sure. So, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, you know, it's. It is highly motivating for players to be given a short period of time to earn something, but especially going back to you know, the pacing question, you know, you don't want to burn those players out. You don't want to be abusive. So you need to tune your difficulty appropriately for the amount of time that you're giving them. Um, we will talk later about some examples about why it's so important to you know, make sure that those time frames and the difficulty of the quests are reasonable. Um, yeah, it's not not ethical to burn out your players, to expect them to spend money perhaps in order to complete the quest. And it's also not good for your game because players will not appreciate that. They'll get frustrated, they'll burn out and they'll leave. All right, another anonymous question. Should some quests be made essential in order to unlock more in-game content or this, should they usually be side tasks for quick rewards? Um, I would say that a combination of those is often a good choice. So you have your progression related quests that really drive players throughout your game and allow you to spread out the content. Uh, so you don't release new content and it's immediately consumed by players, you know, they have to work for it. But it's also good to have short term, um, short term goals for your players so that they can earn rewards quickly. So they feel like you know, they're making progress regularly in your game and being rewarded for their effort. And it's not all just grind. Great questions, everybody. Thank you. So next, we are going to start building our quest development spreadsheet. Now, this is a spreadsheet that I've built on a few different quest heavy games that I've worked on in the past. And it's really useful for getting organized and having all of your quest content in one place. For now, we're just going to get it set up so we can fill it in later. We're going to start by naming our tab here, All Tasks, because this is where all of the tasks are going to live for the game, where we're going to create all the potential tasks for our quest. And we're going to create a header here called Category. And these are going to be the high level systems in the game. And don't worry, we will go into that in more detail in a bit. Our next column is called task. This is the goal or activity that the player will be working on. It's going to be a verb. Okay. Next, we have one called default task text. This is the basic version of the player facing text. And that just means that this is the version of the task that players will read in the game. Now, this is going to be a string, a list of characters that we put into the game. So 
we want to make sure that that string fits into our Quest UI, into the area of that UI screen that we have reserved for it. So we're going to add another column called character count. And that is characters and the default task text. And this is going to help us make sure that we don't exceed our character limits that we've established based on the size of our UI. So we're going to add a formula in here by hitting equals capital L-E-N open parentheses. And then we're going to pick the cell right next door and close our parentheses and hit enter. Now you see that zero popped up here. That's because there's no string here, there are no characters. So if we add some, suddenly we have a character count. So it's useful to know how many characters are in that string, but it would be even better to know if we've exceeded the limit that we've set for ourselves. So we're going to add some conditional formatting by right-clicking, going to conditional formatting, and then saying format the cells if, it is greater than a value. And this value will be however many characters you've decided is the right amount for your UI. So let's, for example, say 50. And it's going to color that cell if we exceed 50 characters. So let's make it a little bit more obvious here and make it red. All right, now, if we, exceed that character limit, not quite. There we go. Then it turns red, which is a nice red flag for us to let us know that we need to shorten our sentence here. Next, we're going to add a column called burn rate. And this is just going to be the time for average player to perform the task once. This is just useful information to know so we can judge the difficulty of the task and how long it's going to take. Next, we have difficulty. And this is just a relative judgment call. Um, so we want to know basically how difficult this task is for the average player to complete that task once. Now we are also going to do some fun things here. So we're going to add data validation. So right click, go to data validation choose list of items. And this is going to allow us to create a drop down menu. So we're going to say easy, comma, medium, comma, hard, comma, and extreme. And we are going to save that. So now if we decide based on earn rate and other factors that this is a very difficult quest, that's useful information to have when we're browsing through this list and picking out tasks to build out our quest lines. But just being able to pick easy, medium, hard isn't as useful as it could be. It would be even better if we set up some conditional formatting again. So let's go to right click, conditional formatting. And we're going to say format cells if text contains easy. Now, if it's easy, we want it to be colored green. Now we're going to add another one. If text contains medium, okay, and we'll add a couple more. If text contains hard, let's make that one red. And finally, if text contains extreme, 
then let's make it purple. So now we can see that if we set our difficulty, it updates the color. And that'll make it so much easier if we say, all right, we wanna make some really tough achievements. Well, we can do that by making really any task here um, more difficult by increasing the quantity required. But there are some tasks that are just gonna be inherently difficult. And those are gonna be extreme. So if we wanna pick out some really gnarly ones, then we just have to find the purple ones in the list, grab those and move them over into our achievement spreadsheet. All right, now last thing we're going to do here is add notes. And this is just additional factors affecting difficulty. Right. So if there are other things that might make this task particularly difficult, like it doesn't even unlock until player level 10, or if there are caps or cooldowns, things like that. That's all good information to know and it lets us know that we should take those into account when we're thinking about difficulty. Now, let's make this just a little bit nicer and cleaner uh, for anybody else who happens to be using our spreadsheet, maybe uh, our system designer who's doing our difficulty balance, for example. And go down here and also maybe make this just a little bit different there. So now it's easy to separate the actual tasks from our different headers. All right, last thing I'm going to do is come down here and right click, change color to red. Now, the reason I do that is because this sheet, once it's all filled out with all the potential tasks in the game, is going to act as a reference sheet. We're not gonna be changing it much unless for some reason and we change one of the systems and that means that the tasks need to change or if we add new tasks to the bottom. So this just flags this tab to let other people who are using it know, you know, don't mess with this one, don't change it, just copy and paste from it. It also makes it really easy to find that tab as well if you end up having a bunch of tabs in your sheet. Okay, next we are going to create a dailies tab. Now, since dailies are really simple, consisting of very simple tasks without a lot of narrative, we're just going to come back over here to all tasks, grab everything, including our formulas and our formatting, and we're just going to paste that right in there. And you can double click in between your columns to automatically expand them to fit the content. All right, now we are going to do the exact same thing on another tab called achievements. So once this all tasks tab is filled out with all the potential tasks in the game, you'll be able to just copy from this list and paste ones that you think make good dailies or make good achievements. So the only real difference between the dailies and the achievements tab is going to be the difficulty of the tasks that you put into them. Dailies, obviously you want players to be able to complete them in a single day, hopefully in a single session. Whereas the achievements, you probably want them to last a lot longer for the most part. Okay, we are going to create our final tab called quests. Now, this one is going to be more complicated. This is where we will take our basic task text and add some narrative to it. So we're gonna have some new columns in this one, starting with quest title. Now this is the name of the quest. 
and it is optional. You don't have to have titles for your quests, but if you want to, it's there. Now, since this is a new string in the game, it will take up place in our UI. Let's come back over to one of our other tabs and grab character count. Don't forget to grab your formula there and place that next to it. Now, one thing to consider is that different areas of your UI might have different character length requirements. So you can always right click here and go to your conditional formatting, click on it and change that value of 50 to 30 to 60 to whatever fits best in your UI. Okay. Next, we are going to add another column here. We're going to call it flavor text. Now, this is just narrative or context for the quest. And it's also optional. Now, because we just added a new string, we are again going to grab our character count, paste that right there. Now, our next one is going to be called trigger. And this is going to be the thing that causes the quest to appear for the player. So the event that activates the quest, whether that's the player leveling up or tapping on a quest giving NPC, or maybe an event that starts running in your game. And it's really useful to know that information in the context of your quest content, because it also helps to determine how difficult it is. Um, and it's also really valuable for going back and QAing your quest line to make sure that it's behaving exactly as you intend it to. Okay, next, we are going to go back to our other tab and grab our default task text. Because when we start populating this tab with tasks, we're just going to copy and paste our task text from our other all tasks tab. And then we're going to come over here and we are going to say, this is our actual task text. This is going to be the more interesting version of the basic text. We're going to make it more fun. So we're going to say now with improved flavor. Now, of course, because we just added a new string onto our UI, we are going to grab our character count again. And finally, just because it's a really good reference to have the difficulty of all of your tasks for your quest line together and visible, we're going to come back over here and grab difficulty. Don't forget to grab your drop down menu. Great. So this just means that if we're making a 10 part quest line, we can very quickly see based on the tasks that we've chosen, how difficult they are, maybe reorder them based on that without having to go all the way back to our all tasks tab and find those tasks, which could be scattered all over the sheet. All right, and that is it for our spreadsheet right now. We are going to head back to the presentation and come back to this later. All right, do we have any questions? Um, there's one question from Anonymous. Um, it's what's the benefit of mapping out quest in a spreadsheet compared to just adding it directly to the game data? Doesn't it add more steps to the process? It adds more steps to the process, that's true. But there can be a lot of benefits in terms of having a solid plan mapped out uh, in that spreadsheet so you can see the relative difficulty of everything that you're asking the player to do. So all of your strings are in one place. Um, and so that you can share that with your teammates. If you do have a larger team, um, maybe the person who's writing the text isn't the same as the designer who's coming up with the quest. And so it's really useful to 
you know, be able to share all that information in one place, have one source of truth for all of the different quest related things in your game uh, related to content. And that's also true for, um, do you have somebody else who's going to be doing the balance work? If they're going to take a look at the list of quests, they don't have to you know, dig through data to find them. They just have a nice spreadsheet that they can read easily and decide how difficult these quests should be once they're implemented. And finally, it's also really useful for, um, for play testing and for QA. I'm sorry, for play testing and for QA, in that you can um, make sure that you have a record of how these quests are meant to behave and exactly what they're supposed to say. And that could be maybe you're making that check, maybe somebody else on your team is making that check, but just having that record and being able to compare it to what's actually happening in the game is so, so, so helpful. All right, that's all the questions we have. Thanks for watching part one of our Level Up workshop on quests, achievements, and dailies. Stay tuned next week for part two on quest design, where we'll dive into creating quest tasks that touch all of your game's content and systems, keep your players engaged, and are just the right amount of challenging. So keep an eye out for that next video, and please like and subscribe to the Roblox Developer Relations channel so we can continue to level up together. Oh.